Hello, hello. Hey, everyone. This is Nakia Wade. Uh, for many of you, you're probably returning, but if this is your first time, I want to give you a nice warm welcome to a seat at the table. Um, I have a very special guest tonight. I'm so excited. So, so excited. We've been connected on social media for years and um, I really just admire her. She's a woman of God. She's about her business. She's doing very big and impactful things. And I'm just humbled that she even agreed to, uh, to come on a seat at the table tonight. Um, so I want to welcome the one and the only Dr. Brianna Whiteside. Um, we are going to give it a little bit of time, Brianna, for people to join us. But I just want to thank you so much for, for your guests and for, for joining us. I'm so excited. I'm excited, too. Thank you for having me and inviting me on your platform. I do not take any opportunity lightly. And so thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. I... <laughs> see that we hello prophet dawn good evening good evening i see a few people hopping on um don't be shy give us a hello let us know where you're joining from we're, we're really happy to have you on tonight Let's see. i see a, a handful of people on so i know, I know you guys are watching <laughs> I can I can see you. <laughs> I know that Prophet Dawn is joining us from Georgia. GA in the house. Awesome. We're gonna give a little more time and then we can dive on in. Okay. Hmm. All right, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just checking my social media pages, making sure that things are shared. And we are good to go. Just bear with me for one second. All right. All right, awesome, awesome. Let's dive on in. Can I just get a confirmation that you guys can hear clearly? Uh, Prophet Don, can you just confirm that you can hear us okay? I think that we're good to go. All right, well, let's rock. Uh, Brianna, so again, I really just wanted to, to thank you for joining a seat at the table. I am so intrigued by you and I, and I'm so like, I want to hear so much more about your success story and your background and just all the exciting things that you're work on so that you're working on. So maybe we should just like start at the beginning. <laughs> maybe yeah. we should start from the beginning. Um, so I know that you have your publishing company. You're balancing quite a, a bit right now. You have your publishing company, you're a professor. Um, I know that you have empowering online content, which inspires me. Um, you're a bit of a fashionista and you have a coaching business, right? You're, you're doing a million and one things and you do it so gracefully. Um, so maybe we could start from the beginning. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So I am, of course, thank you for having me. I am Dr. Brianna Whiteside. Uh, I'm English professor. Um, my voice sounds like this because I'm trying to get over a cold, but <clears throat> I'm from the South side of Chicago and I am a first generation graduate. I'm from the hood. Um, and by the grace of God, really, I made it out. And of course, a disciplined parent. But I, I, I always tell people that I should have been a statistic um, because I do come from a single parent home, because I do come from the inner city of Chicago. But how you start your story does not determine how you're going to end your story. And so by you know determination, grace, and just really a, a believing parent. My mother was is a believer. I was able to navigate a lot of uh, things in life and make it out. And, you know, I kept going through education, not because I knew I wanted to be a teacher at, in second grade. I had this wonderful teacher in second grade who inspired me. And I wanted to be a teacher, but I think I was naturally born a teacher. 
I didn't know that I wanted to be a professor, um, but I knew I wanted to be a teacher. So I just kept going for what I instinctively knew to do. And as I continue going through education, I actually started to learn my purpose, um, which is in the realm of, I'm a hybrid gift. And so I'm a teacher, but I'm also so many other things. Um, and so it's, it's going through education that I learned my purpose and I've emerged as a leader, uh, an author, a publisher, wow. a kingdom builder. Um, yeah, in a short amount of time. So it does not have to take, I always tell people it does not have to take a long time just because it took other people years to do whatever they have to do. No, it doesn't. God can shorten the time for you. And I, and I, I'm a testament of that. I became a, I started teaching college at 24. I became a professor at 28 with my doctorate. I know I'm 34 now. Um, but it doesn't have to take a long time. That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so that's a little bit about me and what I do. Uh, I'm also a YouTuber. I, I teach Bible study. I teach kingdom Bible studies mainly on YouTube. And then I guess maybe I'm a social media influencer. I talk to people about affordable fashion because I think that we can look good on a budget. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I love it. I love it. So for those who are watching and listening, I, like I said, I see a handful of you guys. Feel free to say hello. We don't bite. Feel free to say hi. Let us know where you're joining from. I see you watching. It's so funny. <laughs> I see you watching. So uh, Dr. Brianna, tell me this. So, for the people listening, what did you get your doctorate in? Yeah, so I um, got it in English, literature. It's perfect. Um, so, of course, um, and it's so funny how I got to to my doctorate degree. Um, I, I went to college. I'm a first-generation graduate. I knew nothing about college. I knew nothing about anything. And because I didn't knew, know a lot of things, I got into every school that I applied to. But because I didn't necessarily have the guidance and understanding of how it worked, I just did any, many, mighty more and picked a school. I don't tell you, don't do that. Right. It was not wise. And I ended up in a school, a small HBCU in Mississippi. I had never really lived in the South and it was a culture shock. Mm. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not a quitter. And so I was already down there. I'd gone through all this stuff. <coughs> And um, I, I did my four years there and I majored in English because I was always good at reading and writing. That was my English and arts. It's I scored the highest in high school. And wow. so it was I didn't have a plan. I didn't plan on going to grad school, y'all. I didn't just have I didn't have a plan B. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Someone said, hey, maybe you should go to graduate school because no one talked to me about graduate school. I applied to one school. And I got in that one school. I think it was just divinely orchestrated. I got into one school for my master's. And then after that, I was like, okay, what do I do next? I don't have another plan. I don't, you know, then I started to learn that you don't really make a lot of money in academia unless you have a terminal degree. So a, a doctorate was never on my radar. I was just trying not to go back to the hood. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, one of my mentors at the time was like, <clears throat> hey, go ahead and go to go apply to grad school. I applied to a ton of grad schools. I didn't get in a lot of them. I only got in two and I applied to a lot of them. But there was this black woman academic that I wanted to study under and she had just come out of retirement and was down in Alabama, the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. And it was so funny. I think it was a God thing because when I was a freshman in college, one of my teachers, she was her, um, she was her student. And she told us about this dissertation. And I said to my within myself, hey, I would love to study under somebody like that, not knowing that six years later I would get an opportunity because this woman had come out of retirement. And I went to Alabama because I wanted to study under her. And mm -hmm. I finished the degree in four years. And then I, you know, became wow. an English, a tenure track English professor. That's incredible. So okay, so. So far, I get that you knew that you wanted to be a teacher mm -hmm. since you were in second grade, right? So this is like your big dream. You're just going for it. Got the doctorate degree. So tell me a little more about how you, I mean, it makes sense because you love words, right? You're a wordsmith. But tell me how that journey started of you pivoting from, okay, I'm teaching, but now I'm ready to write the book. Now I'm ready to open the publishing company. How do we get there? Yeah. Um, okay. So... 
I, I was born a teacher. I say that. So what, whenever, it, whether I'm in the academic classroom or not, I am teaching something. Um, <clears throat> and so I became an author. My first book was Woman of Royalty, Rule from a Place of, of Authority. And it, it came out of frustration because I was just starting my walk with God um, two years before. And I will always hear, now, mind you, my mom is a believer. We were raised in church. I was raised in church a little bit. So I knew I had some foundational things. But when I started the walk with God for myself, people would say, you need to find your identity in Christ. And I'm like, okay, how? And they could never tell me how, right? It was always this cricket moment. You just don't have to see God. What does that mean? Right. And for someone who's a teacher or someone who likes to learn, I'm like, you need to teach me how I need to do this because just telling me that I need to do this is not helping me. No one could tell me how to do it. And it was one day um, I had just gotten back from Amsterdam. I was doing a study abroad program for a few weeks and I just kind of heard the Holy Spirit whisper Esther to me. And I'm like, I know you mm -hmm. lying. That's only 10 chapters in the book. And don't nobody even talk about Esther. And you know what I mean? Like this. And I'm also at the time learning that God is speaking to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm, I'm, I think I'm jet lagged and I hear Esther and I'm not like, nah, it can't be. No one talks about Esther. And it wasn't until I started going through Esther and reading that the book opened up, the text opened up. And so that book, wow. Woman of Royalty, walking through 10, 10 chapters, it walks you through the life of Esther, how she became an orphan and to, and, and to a queen, right? Mm -hmm. It also chronicles my life as I'm coming into this identityless woman and also stepping into the authority that God had given me and it wasn't until I fully stepped into my identity that I was able to write that last book. I mean, that last chapter of that book. And so wow. that's how I became an author, because I needed help. And I knew that so many other people like me who were trying to follow God needed help. But we don't understand the mystical language that mm -hmm. sometimes Christians speak in. Like, I didn't understand. I'm, I'm an academic. Tell me, please. <laughs> um, and so that's how I ended up writing my, my first book. The publishing company came out of a need. Um, <clears throat> I had already went through self-publishing and I knew that so many of my friends or people I knew wanted to be authors. And because I knew the process, I was bridging the gap. Not mm -hmm. only that, at the time, I was also trying to get out of consumer debt. I had like some $10,000 worth of consumer debt I was trying to get out of. And I'm like, I'm going to have to use these gifts. Like something's going to have to give because my salary is set. I'm going to have to figure out how to do this thing. And so I really believe like your gift makes room for you and you're going to have to work your gifts. They don't just have to be for, at a job. You can create your way out of poverty. You can create your way into generational wow. wealth because you have the mind of Christ. And so that published this, this publishing company hey. came as a result of that. And because I can read and write, because I have three degrees in English, yeah. my skills transfer um, because I spend time with books, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's how it came to be. I never wanted to be a publisher. I never wanted to be an author. All I wanted to do was be a teacher since the second grade. And as I kind of pursued that path, other things started to unlock. And I just had to have the courage to explore them, albeit not perfectly all the time, but I just had to have the courage. So it's generally the thing that led to the thing. Wow. And it's funny, like you said, how things kind of just like fall right into place. Like it seemed like you were like focused on what you needed to do and it all just kept like, I don't want to say manifesting, but I mean, yeah, I guess so. That it just all kind yeah. of like materialized for you. I think that's super exciting. Um, what was I going to ask you? So tell me this. So wait, when, when did you initially, so what year did you publish the book and what year did you launch your publishing company? 2018, the book came out. I was actually, uh, it came out a week before I graduated with my doctorate. Um, and so 2018, the book count comes out 2020, the company is launched, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we were all at home. We're in the middle of the, you know, situation in the world. And I'm sitting at home saying, what can I do? How can I? Because I'm on a, at this point, and I can say this because it, it largely informs who I am. 
I had just gotten out of graduate school. I was living on credit cards. I didn't have a lot. So of course, when you're making $13,000 a year as a graduate student, you're living beneath the poverty line. And mind you, I was 28 when I graduated. And so now I'm in my career, I have a salary, but I'm in consumer debt. And so I'm like, this can't be my life. And I felt like a failure at for the first time in my life because I am in this debt um, that we don't like to talk about, things like that, because I needed to survive in graduate school. I get it. Yeah. It was a tough transition to Vegas for me. Um, and I am starting to take it seriously. At the beginning of 2019, I'm like, I can't. I can't have this over my head. God, I need to get out of this consumer debt. And first of all, that meant that I need to stop retail therapy, right? That don't work. You need to go to real therapy. Um, but I also had to say, how can I create my way out of this in a, in a fast time, in a fast time frame? And so at the January 2019, I started listening to podcasts about money. So Dave Ramsey, listening yeah. to tell people that debt is dumb. It's crass sometimes, but you, you need to hear it. Yeah. I just wanted to hear people talking about money because I didn't grow up in an environment where people talked about money. It was mm-hmm. always on the hush or we always rob Peter pay Paul. You know how it goes. Mm-hmm. And so I am having to retrain my mind and my brain and say, yes, you've reached success on this level, but you have not mastered it on this level. And so mm-hmm. I'm going through this. I'm working. I'm using my gifts. I'm paying off credit cards. I'm journey chronicling the journey on Instagram. And I actually got out of that 10 K um, in eight months. It only took me. Wow. Eight months. I was, I was grinding. I was budgeting. I was, I was in a house. I was crying. I was using my gift. I was doing everything I could do. And then after I got out of that 10 K, then the Holy spirit started to say, now save 10 K now, mm-hmm. now build on this now build on that. And so that is how I became, um, financially independent um, because I started to use my gifts, my job. Yeah. I loved it. I love my job, but they would never allow me to live the life that I want to live. And so that meant that I had to wake up earlier to do what I needed to do, go to sleep later, can't go out with my friends. And people would tell me this, it, it don't take all that, Brianna. You, you looking crazy. They did. But those same people are saying, how did you do it? Mm-hmm. Because what was a small sacrifice and it was a hard sacrifice for me to say no to my friends and for me to you know pull my desires back for a greater a greater thing that i wanted it was hard and i cried through it a lot but it only nine months it took nine months of intentional focus for me to eliminate this debt all of my credit cards paid off and start building in multiples of ten thousands right so now all you have to do is rinse and repeat if you 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 know what to do foundationally work the process um so that is how the publishing company came about and as p and sometimes i can't do it because i'm in the semester and i have a demanding career um but sometimes i can and that is how it happened because god i think that god makes us um multi-gifted Um, And I also think that while we do have a purpose, we also have micro assignments within that purpose. Mm. So I I don't think, I think we talk more about the overarching purpose and not the assignments in the seasons of the purpose that we may Mm -hmm. be in. And so Mm -hmm. it's only when you maximize those assignments that you're able to elevate in the way that you want to elevate or you were created to elevate. I love it. Girl, you touched, you touched on, on so many things. There are like things that suck out to me. So maybe I'll start with the most recent and go on back. What you just described reminds me of David, right? Because mm-hmm. we know that David had, again, he had a, we know that he was purposed to be king, right? We know that he was a warrior. We know that David was a musician. You know, we know that he was a hard worker out in the field. And I think what you like, I love that you hit that on. It's good that you know your identity, that you know your overall purpose, but you need to understand how you should be functioning in any season, right? Because there was a season where David wasn't king or where he wasn't, you know, conquering Goliath. Mm -hmm. Um, And what you just said just reminded me of that. I think that that was like extremely 
pivotal. Another huge thing that you touched on too, right, is that some people can be so successful in one area, right? And like there, there are people who make $200,000 a year and they are still a paycheck away, maybe two paychecks away from like losing it all, right? I mean, that's just the, the reality. Yeah. And I love that um, it, it sounds like what you're, what you're teaching is like success from like a, um, a, a, a wholeness perspective, right? Like we don't want to be excelling up here in one area and then neglect our finances or neglect our health, right? And I, I really love how you how you tied that together. So I'm curious. So I know that English is your thing. I, I heard what you said, you know, you didn't really feel like a, a failure, even though you weren't until you found yourself in debt and then you quickly got out of that nine months later. Did you come against like any challenges at all, like uh, with getting your doctorate degree or even in the process of like writing the book or launching the publishing? Girl, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who, who does not when you're trying to ascend? Who does not? First of all, um, graduate school takes a lot of people out. Graduate mm -hmm. school will test you in ways you never knew you were going to be tested. And as a, let me tell you all this, I got into graduate school on conditional admittance, which means it, I mean, I graduated with a 4.0 in my master's. I did not score well on, on the GRE. So I got into school on academic probation for the first time in my life. I've never been on academic probation. I've always been a high achieving person. I've always gotten good grades and it played with my confidence because I'm like, because I didn't do well on a, in a, on a, a test that now I am conditionally admitted. So now I have to prove myself. And for someone who had not fully grasped who they were, I was in works all the time, all the time, working, grinding myself into the ground, ended up with um, anxiety and trying to approve to an institution that I was good enough, right, to be there. Now, yes, I did graduate with 4.0 in my doctorate degree with four in four years, which some people do, some people don't. Generally, people take six. I didn't have six to give them. I have four. Um, I did that. I was teaching. I was tutoring. Um, but also I had, when I wrote my dissertation, I really believe that God led me to my dissertation topic. And I wrote on a single author, the first black woman, science fiction writer, Octavia Butler. And the, the, what I came up against was some people telling me that um, you should not write on a single author because you won't get a job because they will think you are a one trick pony. <clears throat> And every time, so generally people may write on different authors, but have one concept or one theme that they explore. Mm -hmm. I, God gave me Octavia Butler, right? And so every mm -hmm. time I would try to go and do something else, it would never work. And so I come back to this author. My dissertation was on her collective works, 12 novels and nine short stories. And not only did my, I, I leave uh, graduate school as the one of the higher achieving graduate students, but my dissertation won the departmental award for best dissertation, the college award for best dissertation, and the university-wide award for best dissertation. Wow. And, but through the writing process, people told me, you're not going to get a job. I not only got a job, but I got three awards because <laughs> I had to go with what I knew was true, what I knew God was telling me to do, even if it didn't make sense, because at the time, I mean, now she's having this resurgence with the rise of all the technology and things, but it didn't make sense when I was writing about a collapse of an educational system and uh, telepathy until now where we're seeing education changing and Elon Musk doing the neural link when he's trying to do brain to computer interfacing. It didn't make sense because it was science mm -hmm. fiction, but the revelation was in the earth and God was saying, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter if they can't see it. They're going to see it one day. I need you to obey me. And so I had to go against that. I had to go against the people who were great advisors to me. 100% they were, but I think that they were only able to advise up until the point that they were able to see or what they've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as a believer, I had to say, no, I kind of perceive something else. And even if I don't get the job, I've obeyed God. 
and it was tricky. The job market in academia is tricky. You may not get a job, but I think it was by grace that I got it. <coughs> um, but I did. And I mean, here I am. So, of course, wow. you know, school, yes. When you're, you are in graduate school, yes. Um, which is why also if y'all, any graduate students out there, I have a free devotional on my site called Seamless. It's for graduate students specifically because I noticed that they were left out. And I needed a devotional for me as a graduate student. So I give it away for free on my website, BriannaWhiteside.com. Um, as far as climbing financially, absolutely. I come again, a lot of struggle, a lot of setbacks because it's so funny because um, I've spent majority of my life in poverty. So now I am trying to climb out of it, but that my mind is still in it sometimes, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm having these relapses. I'm having these setbacks because I, I haven't been out of metaphorical Egypt that long. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been out of it. And so, I, of course, I'm wavering, but I'll keep pressing forward. And as I continue to refine the process and refine the tools and do what I'm supposed to do, then I was able to say, okay, let's go ahead and take flight. And so now it's not really a problem for me, but this was 2019. We're in 2023 now. So it's been a journey. It wasn't a elevator thing. It was steps, steps, keep working the steps. Even when everyone else is on vacation, enjoying their life, all the things I'm in the house, <laughs> just suffering. It was really a suffering. <laughs> not suffering. I was suffering, <laughs> but I'm not suffering anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, like listening to you, I mean, when you keep like sharing these story, stories, it's reminding me of people from the Bible, right? So when you were saying that your advisors, well-meaning people, they could only take you to what they saw, but you had to obey what God showed you. It reminds me of Noah, right? Like when he was building, people are like, well, what are you building? You know, what is what is this flood that you're talking about? They had never experienced or seen something, but no one knew what he heard from God. Um, and your story really reminded me of that. I think that that's amazing. I love that you also said, you know, for those in grad school, those, I, I know for a fact that there are some people watching who desire to go to grad school. And, and uh, I'm sure people in the replay, this will resonate with them as well. Um, I kind of want to, so I mentioned that because I, I think it's awesome that you have the devotional. I also kind of want to pivot into like the, the coaching business that you have, right? So like they, again, the coat of many colors, Joseph, there are so many things that you are graced to do. Yeah. Tell me about the coaching business. When did it start? I know that you help empower people to walk in your in their greatness. So tell, tell us all about that. It started in 2022, actually. Nice. So as you can see, all of this is building. All of this is cracking nice. open as I continue to move forward and who I'm supposed to be. Um, a lot of people come to me for one-on-ones and they want wisdom and I get it, right? Um, and I can't necessarily mentor at a grand scale because of all of the things I do and because I have certain priorities. Um, but my coaching thing is for one, spiritual growth, right? You can strategically grow strategically with God, right? It does not have to be a mystery too. Financially, I walk people, we, we do strategy sessions. This is what the business is. It's a strategy session. If you have a strategy, you can lessen the time between where you are and where you want to be. <clears throat> the lack of strategy will have you wandering for a long time, spinning your wheel. So I am great at strategy. I am great at building systems and structures, which is why I'm able to do the things that I'm able to do because I'm operating in my graces. Um, but the coaching thing came about because people were asking me to do it, not because I wanted to. Um, I don't consider myself as an expert. I could just, I, I, what I do is take what you give me, where you are, where do you want to be? Let me hear about your habits. Okay, now let's come up with a strategy together. It's up to you to do the work. It's not up to me. I can't guarantee you any results that you're not willing to sacrifice for. Right. Um, and so, yeah, the coaching business came in 2022. 
I'm here for it. I love it. It sounds like you you almost serve as like someone's like COO, like the CEO, they have their vision, but CEOs don't always understand like the in-between steps to get there. And then the COO comes in and is like, okay, well, this is how you take that vision and turn it into reality. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's amazing. And I think the, the great thing about the coaching is you don't just get a strategy session or, you know, one-on-one -on -one with me, you get a workbook, um, but you also get a free ebook. And let me tell y'all how this works. Um, and they're all of mine. They're all different books for a different, whatever session you book. In 2020, I did, this is before the publishing company. Um, I kind of sensed that guy was like, Hey, I want you to write up an ebook and give it away every month, a free ebook. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a mailing list. I didn't have anything. I just kind of sensed that I was supposed to write an ebook every month and give it away. And of course, when you're giving stuff away, people want free stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I started creating this ebook, this list, this, this, this mailing list. What was free in 2020 became monetized in 2021. Mm. So for, as my influence grew, if you wasn't on the getting, get in on 2020s freebies and you come to me and you see, I have this lot, this large library, you are paying because I gave it away in a previous season, these receipts. Uh -huh. Now they're monetized. So now when you book your strategy session with me, one of these books are given to you. They're included in the package. And so like, I, I'm trying to just talk about obedience, the pathway of obedience, right? Uh -huh. I didn't know that a free, free eBooks every month in 2020 was going to turn into what it is, what I'm doing now in 2023. I did not know uh -huh. that. But as you know, God doesn't give you the next step. There is no next step without this level of sacrifice, without this level's disobedience, this level's obedience. And so I was just doing what I felt he told me to do. And people were like, why are you giving this away? I pay for it. I'm like, I, he told me to do it. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know why. I, I don't know. And so as I began to do that, then I feel like the, the enterprise of who I was created to be started to become a thing. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. That's like, girl, you just said so much. I love it. And it sounds like the the key theme is that when God told you to do something, that's what you did. And it sounds like you got a lot of opposition from the things that you move forward with. And like God proved to to be who he is, right, to provide and to, to make that pathway. I think that's amazing. And that is just super inspiring. There are so many things that you have shared tonight already, things I know are hitting people who are watching and even things that are like confirmation to me personally. Yeah. Um, so I love this. I love this. Uh, so we talked about the coaching business. I do kind of want to pivot into this. This is so much fun. So I know that you are a professor, you're a serial entrepreneur, you're an author, publisher, uh, a coach, helping people and empowering folks. I kind of want to pivot back to the fashion part, right? I, I love this. I love this. And I and I would be remiss if I didn't even address this. So aside from just looking great, what have you learned in your business experience, in your life experience? You said you, you started in poverty. I'm sure that as God continued mm -hmm. to elevate you, maybe the way that you dress or presented yourself and the way that you're thinking about these things has elevated too. Um Give me some 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 key nuggets on how important the way that we dress and the way that we present ourselves, especially as women and even like women of color in, in the business world. What, what are your thoughts on that? Can we just talk about the importance of presentation and showing up? Yeah. Um, so first, I want to say I have I got a story for this, too. Um, <laughs> look, I got stories for days. OK. I'm here for it. <laughs> I was always interested in fashion as a kid. Like I used to be on punishment a lot for the summer. I was just, I don't even know. My mom just put me on punishment until she said I was off. Um, this before YouTube, this before the things. And I used to just draw these little girls with clothes and things like that on notebook paper. And I was always interested in fashion and look and aesthetics, but I knew that wasn't going to get me out the hood. Mm -hmm. What was going to get me out the hood was education. And so I put that down. And I went straight through for education, right? Um, but it wasn't until, when was this? 2020, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
I was always interested in how I looked and how I presented. And my mom always used to say, like, you always care about your hair and things like that. And I did, even as an academic, but it wasn't just at the forefront. It wasn't as important mm -hmm. as my um, education was. And in 2020, God started to, like, bring it back around. And, you know, I started this little series on um, Instagram called Rich Auntie on a Budget. Because mind y'all, I'm also trying to get my money right. But I still want to look nice. Yeah. I started telling people, this was in my closet. This is where I got it from. This is how much it costs. And uh -huh. it like kind of grew my influence and things of that nature. And it was it was one moment that I was getting, um, I was starting to get ready. And God reminded me, hey, you, all, you were always interested in this. This was always a part of who you were. But you thought you had to choose between getting, between education and who I created you to be and look and your aesthetic and it's when he also started to reveal like your look will attract people before they hear you mm -hmm. right people see you before they hear you so when people see me they don't think i'm an english professor they like what i got this blonde wig on you know what i mean like if i have my big natural hair out they're like nah <laughs> but they don't also don't know i'm a believer yeah. until i start to talk um and so um, God brought that back to me. It was like, you never had to drop it. But because you were running, you were running out of the hood, you were running from, you know, your circumstances. You, I had to bring it back at a time where you can hear me. Um, and I so I think that looks are so important. One of my, when I was in my master's program, my teacher, my mentor told me, hey, Brianna, you can't tell young black girls to be academics because you don't look like anything they want. Right. And so at the time, I wasn't really taking care of myself. I was slipping into feminism and all the other things that naturally you go through. Um, and I wasn't really caring for myself. But what he meant was the reason why they want to be Instagram models is because they're they, they, the, the Instagram models are presenting something that they can see and that they want to emulate. If you don't show up and if you don't present yourself as something as an alternative, then they're not going to want to see that, wow. right? They're not going to want to follow in that path. And this is also something that God was showing me. You are a woman of God. Mm. If you don't have something that a non-believer does not want, they're not going to come ask about your God. Preach. Right? And mm -hmm. so that's when I'm like, oh, I ain't got to, I don't have to dumb myself down. I don't have to like look homely. I don't have to, <laughs> I can, I can, I love, love you. Free less. Free less. And so- when people see me, um, one, I, and I've gotten <coughs> tons of prophetic words about it is your look that God is using to bring wow. people to him. Because they see you long before they hear anything you say. So they're automatically attracted. Oh, she looks nice. Like, what, what's she doing? Right? Mm -hmm. Men or women. I want to mm -hmm. know. And then once you hear me, they're like, I want to know about our God. Let me know how the, it's, it's all strategic. We are made and we are made in the image of Christ. Yes, but we're also how we are made and how we look is pertinent to our assignments. Right. And so as God has been grooming me in my identity and showing cleansing things out, my internal beauty is able to exude the external beauty that people may see. And I think that for a long time, I tried to hide it because people used to tell me that, oh, you look stuck, you stuck up just by looking at me and I'm like, I'm, I'm from the hood. I have, it's only grace that got me here. You know what I mean? Like I'm not stuck up at all. Nothing about me is stuck up, but people used to think that. And they used to think that I was, you know, you think you all that and all that. I didn't, I was struggling with, I didn't, I didn't think I was all that. I didn't at all. And so that was causing me to shrink back, going back to identity. Um, and it was God's like, no, I need you and I need you to show up how I made you in the fullness of everything that you are. And I think that your the way you dress, the way you present does matter. It does matter. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know who's looking at you. I didn't know you was going to email me and invite me on your show. <laughs> I didn't I, I didn't know this. I didn't know who was watching. I'm a single woman. If y'all watching. Hey, y'all. <laughs> She said, hey, Boaz. <laughs> um, but it matters. It matters. And I learned, even yeah. as I, you know, I'm out in the street and things like that, people are drawn to, to my look 
And sometimes they're also drawn to the light that they see. They don't know it's the light. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's the Holy Spirit, but they're attracted to it. Uh, and that's how God, you know, bait and switch, basically. <laughs> like, got them. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, it matters. I love it. I lo you are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your students probably love you, right? Like you're educating them. You probably got them cracking up at the same time. And they are because I'm not that older than my students, especially when I was first starting at 24. But uh -huh. also because I have an ear out in the culture, they're always like, when the first day of school, they're like, you the teacher? Yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm sure they loved it. Um, so I like, I'm so curious, right? I'm always very fascinated by people who are multifaceted and they're like managing so many different things. So first of all, being a professor in and of itself yeah. is demanding, right? Yes. And then on top of that, you're still authoring, you have your publishing company, you're still coaching people, you know, you're, you're doing what is the God is leading you to do, you're the, the rich auntie on a budget, right? Like you're, you're manhandling so many different things. Yeah. Um, how, how do you keep yourself in check? Like, how do you keep yourself organized and disciplined um, just to stay on track with your goals? And I feel like this is so relevant too, because everyone is now thinking, okay, 2024 is like knocking at the door. People are starting to create their goals of like, how do, what, what is your secret? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm so glad you mentioned that because I have a challenge that I want to invite people to. Um, awesome. <laughs> the first two hours of the day are mine. Spiritual first hour, second hour um, is the um, physical workout. Mm -hmm. the, if these two things don't happen, my days are off. My day is off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have not poured into myself. One, I have not allowed God to pour into me. Two, I have not prioritized myself if I'm not taking care of my health. And so once I get those two things out of the way, I, I live by a planner. <laughs> I do. I live by a planner. And so I do block times in Okay. you know, to, 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 to be productive. Um, I take naps. <laughs> I do take naps <laughs> for it, <laughs> but I'm also operating in my grace. And so it, I do do a lot, but it does not feel like a lot because they're all informed by the same thing. I'm never exercising a different muscle. It's just a different attention to a different project. And so it's a normal thing. And so, as you mentioned, you mentioned 2024, you mentioned people looking to the future. Um, I am actually gearing up and I haven't been doing it on Facebook. I've been doing it on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. I have a 40 day let there be challenge. And mm -hmm. it started for me personally in 2021, but it's corporately, it started in 2022. And what the Let There Be Challenge is, is for the last 40 days of the year, we start November 22nd and go through December 31st. Um, I'm teaching people the power of words, not only just the power of words, but I'm teaching them their kingdom authority. And so what I mean by kingdom authority, I mean that God created man with dominion in Genesis 1. He gave us a body in Genesis 2 to exercise that dominion. We lost the dominion with the fall of man in Genesis 3. But in Isaiah, it tells you that for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. What government is Isaiah talking about? He's talking about the government of the kingdom. So when we move over into the new covenant and we see John, well, before we get to there, but yeah, we see John talking about repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. John is posing as a herald, you know, and that's generally that's that little man who has the trumpet and like, the king is coming. The king is coming. If you watch <laughs> cartoons and stuff, um, <clears throat> he's telling them that the kingdom is coming. And when Jesus arrives, he tells you that the kingdom is at hand, meaning the kingdom is here. Um, but when I'm talking about kingdom authority, your Bible tells you that Jesus went through the earth teaching the good news of the kingdom. And he also tells you that I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Um, so if Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, that means that we have dominion in the earth because we were made in the image of him. And he came back to earth to, as Galatians tells us, to restore all rights to his sons and daughters. So mm. in order for us to get our inheritance, which the Bible tells you was prepared for you before the foundations of the world, which was the kingdom, he had to die. Because in, in real life, in order for you to get an inheritance, someone has to die. So as we're thinking about salvation and why Christ died, 
He died to give you the keys of the kingdom and restore yes. your authority, right? Um, what we what we stop at salvation as believers. We stop at this is the good news, but nowhere in the Bible does it says that salvation is the good news. It says that Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom. So what came after salvation was the kingdom, because even when Acts 1 tells you that once he came back to earth, after he was resurrected, he talked for 40 days about the kingdom. Right. And so how are we able to do greater works? Because we now have kingdom authority restored onto us. Why is this important about your words? Because your words have authority and <clears throat> he's giving you that authority because he told you whatever you bind, it will be bound. Whatever you lose, it is loose. So if he's the king of kings. Right. And we're made in the image. We are sons and daughters. We are rightful heirs and we have the legal right to use our words to legislate in the earth. And so the let there be challenge partners right. our faith and our authority with the, the authority that God gave us when God created the heavens and the earth, he created with the let there be decree. And what I ran up against last year when I ran the challenge, people were saying, oh, well, you can't command God. We're not commanding God. We're commanding the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We're commanding the things that mm -hmm. have been, as we know in Daniel, that upheld certain prayers. We're commanding them to let there be, meaning allow it to come to pass because we have the legal right to do so um, according to the scripture. Now, so that is the, we're going to do that challenge. I'm, I'm going to explain it more, but I got to, I got to set y'all up for it. Um, <laughs> but also not only is the challenge spoken, it's written. And the reason why I told I'll people that. we're going to write these 40 decrees out and not type them is because was it not Moses who wrote under authority that God had given him wrote in stone and it became law. Was mm -hmm. it not Esther who wrote the letters of Purim and the Bible tells you that she wrote in authority under the authority that God gave her to legislate on behalf of the Jews? Is yes. it not Rebecca that tells you to write the vision and to make it plain? Why are we writing? Because your penmanship, your handwriting is your UID, which is your unique identifier, which means that it is unique to who, to who you are. So not only are we speaking and printing in the atmosphere, but we're legislating according to the individual authority that God gave us to bring forth things to pass in the earth. I know we want generally people like, I'm just going to type it. No, because that's not the instruction that God has given me. We're going back to the ancient technologies of the Bible that have worked in, and we're going to write them in stone. And so the 40 day, let there be challenge um, teaches you about some of that, your authority, um, not only speaking, because we know that words not only create worlds, but words last as when I studied it in the old covenant, they last over 500 years. And if we look at the conquest of Joshua and Jericho, um, once those walls fall, Joshua will go ahead and says, you know, death to anyone who tries to rebuild these walls, they will lose their first son and their second son. If we go over to first Kings, we see that Hiel did try to rebuild those walls and the first son and his second son died. That's 500 plus years after Joshua made that oath under the authority that God gave him. So your words will always continue to land until they hit the target so they can last over 500 years. I think the kingdom of, <coughs> of darkness has been masterful at um, trying to convince believers that we don't have that authority. Uh-huh. Right? It's spot on. Um, also mm -hmm. demonstrating that how that authority works for new agers. Um mm -hmm. It's, it's not, and, and, and they can do that because mm -hmm. God gave them dominion to do it. He, he gave man dominion, right? But they're doing it illegally because by the very nature of saying, uh, I manifested this, this is idolatry. You have removed God and you have made yourself a God because you said, I manifested this thing. This is not what we're doing. We are co-laborers with Christ. We are joint heirs and we are partnering our words with scriptures because mm -hmm. we ain't just out here saying what we want and all this other stuff. No, we're saying let there be healing according to this healing scripture and we're reciting it. And it is law because the Bible tells yes. us God puts his word above himself. So he has to respond not to you, but to his word. Mm -hmm. So the 40 day Let There Be Challenge begins on November 22nd. You can sign up at BriannaWhiteside.com. You'll get all the information there that you need. Um, and I'm doing the live Q&A on Monday, November 20th, over on my YouTube um, at Brianna Whiteside. And so that is why I mentioned the 40 days, because people are looking to 2024, but there's still 40 plus days in 2023. 
So mm -hmm. why would you not partner with God to get what all that you can get out of 2023? Because you've lost your hope. Because you don't know that 40 days, <coughs> after 40 days, something happens all the time in the Bible. Even if you study the number of 40, something always happens, right? I don't want people to miss out on the opportunities that are still in the year because we have felt so defeated and it's been so hard. No, there's still time. You can use your authority still in this year and see things come to pass. And there's so many testimonials that are you know, on the site once you sign up, even on my Instagram page, I've been dropping them. It's um, My Instagram is the book of Brianna. Uh, um, and you can see people saying how God showed up for them. One girl said, 33 of her let there be decrees came to pass last year, this year, 33 of 40. And so it's not, this is not a name it and claim it. This is not an empty hope situation. Once I teach you about the authority and who you really are, then you're able to exercise that and see things come to pass. I am so hyped about this. And I am glad that you made that distinction, right? About the, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot back to what you talked about with the new age, right? Because that is something that is so popular right now, right? Like new, it, even within the church, right? Like I, I don't even need to talk about like going outside of the church. I mean, with, within the, the church walls. And I love that you made that distinction that we are, and, and I would say that it's even a form of witchcraft whenever we are trying to exert our will over things and we're leaving out the will of God, we really are trying to make ourselves the God of our lives. And I love that you, pinpointed that and, and brought some clarity. Sure. Um, that's exciting. It's I love a, it. So, uh -huh. It's just a thin line between what we do mm -hmm. and what they do. It's, it's very thin. It's always very thin. Um, mm -hmm. But the perspective and the, the centering matters. It, it, it does matter. And so, yeah. A hundred percent. And I, and I mean, you share your thoughts on this too. I mean, you know, there's nothing unique about Satan and his tactics or those who are aligned with him, everything originates. I mean, like even the, the speaking, this speaking, um, the earth into existence, right? The, the first seven days of everything that God was creating. It's like, it seems like there's always like a knockoff that Satan tries to do to duplicate what it is that, um, that's already in the word. So I love that you said, we're just regurgitating back to God things that he said, because we know that yeah. he's a man and he should, I, he's not like man that he should lie. <laughs> For sure. I think that just the, the difference is that what, 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 what God does is makes you go through the, you're going to pay on the front end and then you're going to get your blessing on the back end. What mm -hmm. the other folks do is you're going to get what you want on the front end, but you going to pay a whole <laughs> lot on the back end. And that is why it's so attractive because we want, we want the things we want what we want and it's it always reminding you of what when he tried to tempt jesus in the wilderness how can you tempt me with something that's already mine mm -hmm. how can you tempt me with something that oh you're tempting me with the timing of it right and that's when you pay you always gonna pay you're gonna either pay on the front end i tell all my siblings this or you're gonna pay on the back end i always try to pay on the front end because i don't want to pay with interest i learned my lesson with credit card debt <laughs> i don't want to do it um, but yeah, no, it, it's a fine line. Um, it's, it's really about time because time speaks to people. Time, you know, speaks to a lot of folks and I get it. I get it. But you, you don't know what you're going to pay for mm -hmm. by going, by, by, you know what I'm saying? By going mm -hmm. on the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and pay on the front end, cry, do all the things I got to do, be miserable because I know that it's going to be great. And I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to find myself in the hands of an angry God. That's not what I'm trying right. to do. So, yeah. I love this. So for people who want to join, like I'm very interested. So people who want to join the Let There Be Challenge, can mm -hmm. they also join if they go to your website? Yeah. So all you have to do is go to BriannaWhiteside.com. A pop-up is going to show you pop up and then you put join now and it's going to take you to the landing page. You sign up, you'll get your trigger email, you get a freebie which is a great freebie. Um, yeah. um, and then you get all the corresponding emails. I love it. Uh, Pastor Shirley said your ladder shall be greater. Yes. There's a, there's always a, a price or a cost attached to things. I love the way you broke that down too. Like you really are like a teacher 
at heart. I mean, you know that, but I'm just saying you're you're such a teacher at heart. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So I do want to pivot. So again, guys, if you want to join the Let There Be Challenge, and what date does it start again, Brianna? 22nd. November 22nd. We start November 22nd, officially. Okay, beautiful. So we have, what is that, six days until we start. And you guys can go right to uh, Dr. Brianna's website, which is www.briannawhiteside.com. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys go tonight and join so we can get this challenge together and in 2023 strong. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. So just want to jump right into the, the next thing. I know we're close to wrapping up. Um, I know that you have a heart for people. I mean, that's very, very apparent. Yeah. You love people, you love God, and you love to impact the community. Um, mm -hmm. How do you prioritize giving back to the community? I mean, you already talked about sowing seeds with the free books and things, but I want, I want to hear it from, from your mouth. Yeah. Um, so I teach on YouTube regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so I teach the Bible, I give strategy, I give information out. I think that I can, if I can give you information, your life will never be the same, right? If I can teach you how to apply the information um, to your life, you won't have to go through things as long as I had to go through things. And so not only do I do that, I am a avid giver to the poor um, because I believe that whether it's information, whether it's money, whatever it is, I stand on the scripture that says, when you give to the poor, you lend to God. And he always pays you back with interest. Um, and so I am, I believe that I am rising as a kingdom benefactor, which means that I will underwrite kingdom initiatives and I'm fully prepared to do that, which is probably, which is why God had to take me through that financial journey because it does not profit the kingdom for us to be poor and broke. And you know what I'm saying? It doesn't help. Um, and so I give out, I, I, I want to, I want to die an empty woman. And so as much as I give out, God just keeps giving me more, giving me more, giving me more. And so whether it's, it's you know, one-on-one -on -one free mentoring, sometimes I do that, or giving advice or teaching all the teachings that are on my YouTube channel, this Let There Be Challenge, um, there, I give back. And I believe that it's so important because someone gave to me. And so many people did, whether they knew they were or not, I through their books, they were my mentors, you know, through their teachings, they were my mentors. And I believe in, because I'm an academic, I kind of model after uh, the Black Women's Club movement, lift as you climb. Mm. So as I am climbing, I'm also reaching back and lifting people with me. And so that's how I give, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a philanthropist in any way. So yeah, that's really how it goes. I love it. Like this, like this conversation has been like so rich. Like I'm going to have to sit and like rewatch re everything. Um, do you guys have any questions for Dr. Brianna? I know that we're like wrapping up soon. Is there something that you, you had a question on that she touched on or maybe something you're curious about her journey and, you know, that now is definitely the time to, to pop in your, your questions for her. Don't be shy. I'm sure someone has a has a question. But in the meantime, though, is there anything else that I mean, I know we touched on a lot, right? Like we touched we touched on like <laughs> on, on quite a bit. What um is there anything that you wanted to share with the audience? Any words of encouragement? Um, any final words that you may have? Hi, hi, Prophet Miranda. Uh Prophet Dawn said she covered everything. You really did, like A to Z. Like this was fantastic. Uh, Prophet Miranda, hello. Um, actually, you guys might be able to partner on something. I'm going to touch base with you both af after this for something with business. But um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, I know that Dr. Brianna was extremely thorough. Um, listen, you came... I have a feel. I was gonna say that you came prepared, but I have a feeling that you're always prepared. <laughs> I, I didn't even. I, I like scan the questions. I I'm like, we're just gonna have to go with what we have to go with, because um, I'm in I'm in I'm in planning mode, and then my for, mm -hmm. for the challenge, but also I have students defending theses and exams, and so we're nearing the end of the semester. So I'm like, the Holy Spirit gonna have to make it do what it do. We gotta have to do what we have to do. But as far as encouragement, I want everyone to know that when you're the first person to do something, it'll always look foreign. It'll always look mm -hmm. unusual. It'll always look abstract. And that's how great leaders are made. No one has 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 um, 
has become great duplicating. No one has become great walking the same road and making things look in the same way that that someone else has done it. It's always going to look weird. It's all and it's supposed to um, just like any invention iPhone. Yeah, the revelation was in the earth from the Jetsons. But now, you know, when when Stephen Jobs kind of created these products, they were they, what is this? We, we've never had this thing. And so, of course, people are going to push back. Of course, people are going to say, this isn't this isn't necessary. We don't need a this until they need a this. Right. And so you mm -hmm. mentioned Noah at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of this. What is an ark? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they had never seen rain. So when God is saying Noah is going to rain, what is rain? We've never seen this thing. And so now you have this man over 100 years building this thing that he's never seen, but he only has the blueprint in his mind from what God has told him to do. He only has the blueprint. He's never seen it, though. He only knows the instruction. But the instruction, even though it looked weird, he worked the instruction. He obeyed. He did. And I'm sure he got frustrated. He didn't have a team. We don't see in the Bible that he had a team. But God said, you're going to need this for this future date. Right. Something is going to hit the earth and all everyone who sees you building, they're not going to ha 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 ha. We don't need that. He weird until you until something does hit the earth and then you're not weird and you're protected and you're able to go into the future. And so when I was I, I, I just recently did a teaching on the Noah dilemma on my YouTube. But what we learn is that, you know, once the waters rise, Noah's in the ark. Once the waters rise, he's on top of a mountain. So God has elevated him not knowing because he's inside the project, right? Mm -hmm. He don't know he's one so sitting on top of this mountain. Creation, when, and then when the waters recede, then creation is able to take notice of it, right? Notice of Noah wow. being up there. So I say all that to say, you may not know that God is elevating you because you're inside the project, because mm -hmm. you can't see it because you're in it. But everything in creation takes note of everything you do. Everything in creation is listening. How else would the winds and, and waves obey God, Jesus, if they weren't, if they didn't have ears, if they didn't see, right? And so just because you don't, it doesn't look like what you know sight or, or hearing to look like and be does not mean that it's not in existence and it's not taking note, right? And so I just want to encourage you, if you're building something, I didn't know that when God started to kind of challenged me to study the kingdom, that it was going to help me teach the challenge. I didn't know that when God was saying, hey, Brianna, all these years, study the Bible, study the Bible. And I'm like, for what? I'm an academic. I don't need this. What? Why? Why, why do I have to study? Right. And it's not and it's not until you start to see, oh, something is about to hit this earth. And it would behoove us to come into the kingdom. Right. Because we do stop at salvation. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am the way to what? The kingdom. I am the truth of what? The kingdom. You, you can't get to the father who's in the kingdom without me. But we stop at the, the door and say, I worship you, O door. I worship you, God. No, he said, come on in. I died for you to see all of the things that I, I got for you on this side of heaven. You don't have to wait to go to heaven. You can get it in your domain. In your domain, you can hit it now. And so I didn't know that those moments of obedience, when no one was looking, no one, I haven't even ascended yet, right? I'm just like, I'm starting to rev up now, but those years, what, 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 I started following Christ for myself. I got baptized like 24, so I'm 34, 10 years. Wow. 10 years of people telling me it don't take all that. 10 years of people saying, no, you need to go enjoy your thir your 20s. You need to, you know, get it out your system. What you do wow. in your 20s, you're going to pay for in your 30s. Mm -hmm. And I'm not paying some of them prices that some of my, my friends are paying because I did the hard thing. I did the thing that wasn't attractive, that wasn't sexy. I tried to discipline myself, and it wasn't perfect. The journey wasn't perfect. It was hard. Can you imagine giving up your 20s? Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I say that to say... It's always for a future time. Your Bible tells you that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. If I didn't spend time exercising my gifts and trying and failing or what I perceived as failing, I wouldn't be in a position to 
stand with full authority and conviction and be this great woman that God has created me to be and fully believe that I am who I am his idea of me. I am becoming his idea of me. And it, it's, it, it points back to, I know we're going to get off, but you're, you're, you're it, points back, it points back to my Instagram handle, which is the book of Brianna, because as Hebrews 10 and seven, Jesus says, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do your will of God. We're all books. We're all living epistles. That's what your Bible tells you. We're all books written about us and we're living it out in the in the in the earth. So when people come, I may be the only book they read. They may not read the Bible, but they're going to read the book of Brianna and history will not erase me because I intend to write it. As Winston Churchill says, right, history will not erase you because when God tells you to do something, he is ensuring that history will not forget you. But so many of us cower because we don't have support, yeah. we don't have a team. I don't have a team. I'm a CEO, CFO, COO. I'm the talent. I'm the creative director. I'm all the things. I don't do all of them well, but I'm doing all of them because I have to. Because God didn't ask me if I didn't have a team. He didn't say, okay, Brianna, you ain't got no team. You ain't got to fulfill your purpose. No, he knew good and well that I wasn't going to have everything that I felt that I needed that would make the journey easier. But he knew that everything he had put in me will come out at the right time. And I will still get there based on what he's already put in me before the foundations of the world. He don't have to put nothing else in me. He just has to reveal it to me. And it's only revealed as you obey. As I've showed y'all in my story, my, I have this general purpose. But the assignments were season specific. Amen. But what if I did not take up those assignments in those seasons? When I had the time, when no light was on me, when I, you know, whatever, I probably wouldn't be prepared for my next, right? And if the prophets, and I'm not one, if the prophets are prophesying, a changing of the guard is happening, people mm -hmm. are changing hands, authority is shifting, blah, blah, blah. What if it's supposed to be you? What if you're supposed to be next? but you're not maximizing your assignments and getting every draining, every assignment that you have. And then you get to that next season and you get elevated. And then you're looking back like I should have, I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. I'm not prepared. I didn't, I didn't enlarge my capacity enough. Right. I, I now I can't handle the 10 seeds that got talents that God gave. Me. Mm. Now I can't handle it. So now I'm dropping them. I'm dropping them. And wow. now you church hurt, you you know, because church folks don't get over nothing. But now you just like <laughs> you, 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 you said, but God has said, I gave you all this time to prepare you. There is a set Ooh. time for your ascension, whether in whatever arena that you're in. There is a time, as Ecclesiastes tell you, time and chance happens to us all. So mm -hmm. there's a time when time and chance intersect to create your destiny moment. But if you don't maximize on those time and chances that you have every day, fr frustrated destiny. And that would be on you. And that would be a shame. So that's all I got. <laughs> She's like, that's all. That's all I got. <laughs> you are so funny. I, girl, cool. So, Tonight has like truly blessed me, and I'm sure that everybody watching on live and even the replay, I'm, I'm sure that they feel the exact same way. Guys, please make sure that you go to www.briannawhiteside.com. Uh, we will be starting the Let There Be Challenge, the 40 day challenge starting in six days. So get yourself ready. Go now. We have time. Get signed up. Get yourself prepared. Uh, I think she said we have a special freebie that's going to be coming to us. Super stoked about that. Um, and really ending 2023 in a strong note, being empowered, walking in our kingdom authority. Uh, yeah. Dr. Brianna, tonight has been absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. So empowering, so powerful. Um, and I love that you backed up everything with the word of God. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you for coming on tonight. Do you guys have any last questions for we're, we're about to wrap this thing on up. We're going to end in prayer and then um, we're going to call it a night. Awesome. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to hop in. Pr <laughs>
<laughs> uh, Pastor Dawn said there isn't an age. No, <laughs> no, everybody can use as long as you got breath in your body. Come on over. <laughs> everybody can do it. It's, it's it's a timeless thing. Once you learn this, what I'm going to teach about your kingdom authority, and we go through the 40 days and everything that we're going to go through until December 31st, you will be more equipped and you'll understand just how much God thought about you and Jesus thought about you that he died to come back and give you that authority because it's yours. It's your inheritance um, as a believer. So we don't have to live lowly lives as believers. I just think it's, I, I got a lot to say about that, but we, we wrap mm -hmm. it up. I'm with you. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is no glory in poverty. It's not. Um, I'm with you. Um, awesome. I'm going to jump into prayer. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you for Dr. Brianna. I thank you for her yes. And I thank you for the nights, the, the years, and even the decades that where she sowed in tears, she sowed in obedience, she sowed in sacrifice to be obedient to you because of the vision and uh, the direction that you gave her in spite of the voices telling her it couldn't be done, in spite of the voices uh, telling her that, you know, it, it doesn't require all that, but we thank you for her obedience because as you are operating with her, with that millionaire anointing, Father God, with that global anointing, Father God, we just thank you for her obedience as an Esther to this generation, not just to the young, but also to the older as well. So I ask that you continue to keep that edge of protection around her. We loosen her ministering angels. We loosen her guardian angels and we loosen her warring angels. We come up against any type of distractions or anything that try to intervene on the path that you have set her on. So we just thank you for the beautiful woman of God that she is. And we just thank you how you can continue to blossom her over this season. I ask that you would bless her a hundredfold for every single thing that she has sown into other people's lives for the sake of the kingdom of God. So I just thank you right now for what you have in store for her. I ask that even before this week ends out that you would give her some beautiful blessings, uh, surprises that maybe she wasn't even anticipating. So we speak that into the atmosphere and we command it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for being our everything. We thank you again that we were not called to walk lowly, but we are empowered because of the Holy Spirit that lives in the inside of us. So Lord, I ask that you would just touch every single person under the sound of my voice during the live and the replay and that you will continue to minister to us even tonight as we go to sleep on our dreams. I ask that you would give us prophetic um, unctions and prophetic dreams so that we can hear you clearly and we can cancel any noise that is trying to interrupt what you are trying to speak to your people in the season. So Lord, we thank you and we honor you and we just praise your name. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, guys, we will be back again next month. Again, please do not forget, go to www.briannawhiteside.com. We are going to be starting the Let There Be Challenge on November 22nd. Get started tonight, no excuses. And we're going we're gonna to end this year strong. Amen. Oh, hi, Tanika. That's my cousin in Maryland. Good to see you, cousin. Love you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And Dr. Brianna, again, I'm humbled. Thank you for making the time. I know you're so busy. Um, and we'll, and we'll, be, we'll be talking soon. Everybody have a great night. Love you guys. Have a good one.